Hi everyone, how's your TC week so far? I was so excited about our Xbar button and play shelf button yesterday on Dev on stage. Today, we have more things to share with you. Have you ever wanted to dynamically show additional content on your dashboards without doing complicated hacks? Have you ever feel bad about those blurry images on our dashboard? We're your friends, and we're here to help you raise your dashboards to the next level. Yes, we are the developers who work closely on those dashboard features, and we want to understand what you seek and help you with what you want. My name is Wen Yan, and I'm the software engineer of the dashboard team at Tableau. My name is Brian Carver. I'm a senior software engineer also at Tableau, working on dashboards on the dashboard team. Yes, with the passion towards data and technology, I joined Tableau three and a half years ago and want to develop the features which will make all of us happy. Yes, I share that same passion as Wenyan, and I joined Tableau a year and a half ago. Occasionally at work, we get a week long to do whatever we want, which we call Hackathon Week. I love dashboards and spend those Hackathon Weeks prototyping new dashboard features, many of which have made into the product. And I'm excited because a few of those we get to also demo for you here today. Now, um, I'm going to do something a little bit fun, a little bit out of the thing. Outside of work, I have a family. And um, like girls all like different animals. And one of the animals they like is a raccoon. And I felt with Salesforce strong presence here, I should have a mascot representing the raccoon. And because I couldn't wear my lanyard, I'm going to have this raccoon wear my lanyard for me to represent myself. And it'll come more into the presentation later. Now. Our family really enjoys eating good food and cooking great food. And we love this time of year because you get to enjoy a lot of pies typically during this time of season, like a good pecan pie, a nice banana pie, or even a pumpkin pie. And I'm excited because we built a viz around this very theme, eating good food. Yes, I'm also a food lover as well as an avid scuba diver. So today, let's deep dive into dashboard worlds for an amazing adventure. Every year, I will set a New Year resolution, both for my work and my life. Presenting at TC19 is my bucket list this year, and I was so glad I made it with the help with my team to be here with all of you. Toggling a marathon, qualifying for Boston, is another bucket list for me this year. I trained really, really hard, but had no significant progress. One day, Brian came to me and told me Maybe you should pay attention to your nutrition choices, which are the flu empowering your training plan. Oh, this is a great idea. So he introduced this USDA food guide to me. This food guide has five categories. they are fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy. Each of them play a very important role in our daily healthy eating system. And I even got my personalized nutrition plan based on my age, my weight, my height, and my fitness level through their web page. So let's switch to our workbook to see what happened. Here is my result. From this report, they suggest me to intake 2,400 calories every day, and even with the numbers of servings for each food group. And they also limit my sodium, my saturated fat, and the added sugar level. So with this food guide, I now have a baseline for my daily work. So let's switch to the product list to see what I can eat every day. From this product list, on the top, you can see a huge product list ranged by the, ranged by the overall nutrients, which are sorted, which are presented by the color and the square. What is the overall nutrients? The overall nutrients are the nutrient differences between what we want and what we want to avoid. So let's use the filter to search for my favorite food, meatballs. Thanks, Brian. There are so many meatballs here, 
And my favorite brand is definitely, definitely the Cook Perfect. So let's see the detailed nutrient difference comparison between those Cook Perfect. Brian, I have one question for you. So which one do you think is most, most suitable for me? Based on what the MyPlate had suggested, we can see that the total saturated fat of these chicken meatballs is the lowest compared to the other ones at 1.8, and also has a high amount of protein of 22.4 compared to the rest. So I'd recommend getting the cooked perfect chicken meatballs. Oh, thanks for your data. And I think next time when I do the grocery shopping, I would definitely go for this chicken meatballs. So today, we will use this USDA nutrient data from the Data Food Central, which will build a dashboard journey to the nutrients and show you some fun facts about it using our latest dashboard features. So what is the latest dashboard feature? Let's come back to the PowerPoint to first meet with them. There, dashboard buttons, dashboard button formatting, SVG image support, and URL actions. To better understand the concept and the practice, we will guide you introduce our existing workbook first, then come to the key points for each feature. Now, let's welcome Brian to introduce his story with the nutrients. Awesome. Thank you, Wenyun, for that great intro and looking at the MyPlate. What are dashboard buttons? Dashboard buttons are a way to make your dashboards more interactive through additional actions like navigation and showing and hiding content. Now, um, I really do like pumpkin pies, so let's go see these in action. Let's first go back to the workbook. And on this landing page, we have a few different buttons. There. And this is the page we assume most users would go to when they first go to the workbook. Now there's some show and hide and navigation on here. In the bottom left, there's a button called product, which will take us to the product page. And when we click that, it just does it seamlessly. This wasn't some filter action hack. This was the new, one of the dashboard buttons that we had created to make it easy for you to go to different sheets on your workbook and create a nice seamless experience. Now here, it is on meatballs. And I do like meatballs, but I like pumpkin pies more. Let's switch that to pumpkin pie and see what results we get back from our data. Now, we'll notice looking at this data at the top, they have some things that are Pop-Tarts. They aren't really pumpkin pies, but they have that sort of flavoring. But I'm looking for that authentic pie, you know, with a nice flaky crust and good pumpkin pie filling. Let's look at the bottom three that we have on the chart here. Now, on this dashboard, we tried to make an easy way for you to compare the different nutrients that can be found in it. And we put it as a sheet at the bottom. Now, this sheet is a little bit constrained. Both You can see those vertical and horizontal scroll bars making it a little bit difficult to see all the information. Now, we could have done some dynamic resizing to handle the vertical part, but this horizontal bar would have still been there. So let's instead see this navigation button persisting these filters. If we click on the broccoli, which we chose to be a fun icon represent nutrient data, it'll take us to that nutrients page we had looked at earlier. And you can see the filters persisted, our selection persisted. Even on web, this would have worked great. Now, looking at these three, which one do you recommend we go and get? I think I will go with the Rocky Mountain. I is the protein. Great. So when I'm looking for a pie and I don't have time to cook, I'm going to go pick me up a nice Rocky Mountain pie. I kind of want to right now, but we still have more to go. So I'll have to wait till after the presentation. Now, another handy use of navigation button for creating those immersive experiences is you can have this sort of drill down like we saw here, going from a landing page to products and then to nutrients, and then have a behavior of going back, which is represented by a back button in the upper left. So when we click that back button, you'll see it takes us back to the products, and we have another one that when we click, takes us back to that landing page, trying to give the user that immersive experience that they are looking for while consuming dashboards that you create. Now, I, I really do love pies, and I'm going to keep this theme going. I really found a great vegetable place setting 
um, where you could stick a nice delicious pie in it and have like some carrots and other things around it. And this data has a lot of different nutrients represented in it. And so I wanted to create a sheet that represented all of the different nutrients in there. And keeping consistent with this pie theme, it's, of course, in a circular form. Now, unlike the last one where we had a broccoli representing the nutrients, I felt with the show height, it's more appropriate to have a thumbnail that represents the data that's going to come into view when they click on the button. So in the upper left, if we click on this button, we'll see that additional content come in. And great, we now have a viz pie there. And we can see that placeholder setting where we could put whatever pie we want. Maybe a viz pie, if only it were real. Kind of want to eat one right now. And I'm getting really hungry from this presentation. Um, but this also gave a way for users to get a focus of what nutrients they have in the product list, as well as get inspiration from a different placeholder setting they can have when they get pies of their own. And now what's great is when they are done with this, they can click on that same button that they used to bring in the content, and it'll go away, giving back that dashboard real estate so that they can do additional interactions. We's uh, development team felt that this helped create more immersive dashboards without doing complicated filter hacks that were done in the past. And these behave like buttons, which those filter actions couldn't really do. Now, one thing to be aware of when you're using these show hide buttons is that the content that you're having come in and go away needs to be in a floating layout container, which are the horizontal and vertical objects that you see there on the left in the dashboard pane. Now, the button itself, it can be floating, it can be tiled. It's just the content it's targeting needs to be in a layout container. And we as a development team felt this was a appropriate given that this is content coming in and going away. Now, one other thing I forgot to mention with that navigation button is that you might be worried about, is this going to allow users to be able to navigate to a page they don't have permissions to? No, it's not. It respects permissions and will be disabled when, it's, when the user doesn't have permission to a sheet they're trying to look at. And what's more, we, all show, we also show an informative error message so that the user can see why the button is not working and go and ask for permissions if they feel like they should have access to that sheet. Now, um, as with all demos, we've been showing a lot of desktop, and I've been mentioning it works in the web. I wanted to show the show hide button working in the web. Bear with me if there's a little bit of hiccups. It's just how it works when you start involving the network in your presentation. Um, on here, in the upper left, what we wanted to do is, on the web, we find is when people most, when your dashboards are consumed the most by your viewers. And we wanted to make it so that you could add this additional content without slowing down your dashboard load time as much. And we felt this is important because if the user can't see the content, we shouldn't slow down their experience of first going into the dashboard. So on here, if we click that button there, if it works, yes, you'll see a little bit of a, a load happening. And what this load is, is now that the content is coming to view, we spend the time to load it. So the initial workbook load came in faster, and then once they wanted to view the content, it comes into view or it crashes, like this is a nice demo portion of it. Is it clicking again? OK. Um, now, one other thing. Oh, there we go. It always happens. Whenever I start talking, it comes into view. You can see the same viz came into view. We have the pie coming in, um, which is great. And now, if we hide the content again, Oh, it works a lot faster in demo. But one important thing I want to make sure that you're aware of is just because we waited to load the content doesn't mean every time they show the content, they're going to have to wait for that load time. We cache it once they load it so that they can show and hide it multiple times, and we only had to load it the first time. We hope these improvements help encourage people to be able to use show and hide more on their dashboards and still have dashboards load in a good manner. Now, um, I know it didn't quite work out, so you have to trust me on public. Let's go back to the desktop uh, dashboard, and let's see how we can go about creating these. 
Let's go back to that MyPlate uh, page that Wenyan had shown us earlier, showing the different statistics. Now on here, if you remember, we actually went directly to the products page. Now we have those tabs at the bottom here, which made it easier for us to navigate, but a lot of people like to publish without those tabs. This is a great scenario for adding a navigation button, and it's easy to do. On the dashboard pane on the left, next to other objects you're familiar with, like text and image, there is a button object, which you can drag or double click onto your dashboard, and it'll create a navigation button. And just like the other ones, we found a good placement is just right there on the left column. Now, this button isn't configured to any target yet, as in any sheet to navigate to. So we need to bring up the button configuration dialog so that we can choose where it goes to. If we click the context menu on the button and then click edit button, this will bring up that button configuration dialog. Now, at the top there, you choose which sheet it navigates to when a user clicks on it. Let's set that to products. And then let's commit that by hitting OK. And great, just like that, we've created a navigation button. So much easier than trying to do it with a filter action. Now, there's another thing you notice here. In the bottom left, you can see a lot of image copyright information. That information is useful. We need to attribute where we got the images from. But I don't think we need it always taking up the dashboard real estate. This is a great place for a show hide button. If we select the layout container and then bring up the context menu again, there is an add show hide button. And when we click that, it's going to add a button on the dashboard to show and hide this content, which if we click, you can see the content goes away. And if we click it again, it comes back into view. This gives us that nice dynamic ability on our dashboards that we're looking for. Let's leave this content hidden because people don't really need to see that image information all the time. And that was a nice placement there on the left. Now, you can see these buttons. They have some decent defaults. But we should look at different ways to make them look even better. Let's welcome Wenyan back to the floor to show us how to format these buttons. Thanks, Brian. And I feel uh, your excitement about our newly dashboard buttons and web improvement. Now, let's look back to our dashboard. And you can see those two buttons we just created, but they look so rough. Let's do some formatting towards it. Formatting is so important when you want to, when you want to make your dashboard more readable and attractive. So let's bring up the navigation button for the button config dialog. Did you notice that? We didn't use the context menu this time. You can just simply double click to bring the button config dialog for, in, for convenience. So please zoom in a little bit that our customers can see it clearly. And we have two kinds of button style right now. One is the image button, as you already saw and the other is the text button. So now let's switch it to text button for this navigation button. And to make this text button more discoverable, I think we need to add some border of it. So Brian, would you please open the border config dialog? Yes, we can choose the solid style with the thickest width, and we provide lots of basic colors here as well as a more color palette. Let's click on that more color options. Yes, we have huge range of selections here, which you have already been familiar with. So let's just keep it as black as default right now. You can also choose your own background color as well as the opacity. But just close it for this moment. And the font configuration is just for the text button style. This is the similar to the text object you already know. And we can choose the font style, size, border, color, and all the other things you want. And don't forget to type in the title. We will have the product list here as the title. 
which will make you better understanding the meaning. Let's oh, click it on OK and commit it. Now you can see the simple and clear navigation button, which fitted into our dashboard. This is one button style called text button, but we also have another style called image button. We do all the things for image button as well, except for the font. And we always do the fit and center format for the image button compared to our image zone as well. And do you see this back button here? This is the transparent image. So we support transparent image for our button config dialog. During the previous introduction from Brian, you have already known our newly show height button. But this one looks a little rough right now. Let's do some formatting towards it. Just double click to open the config dialog again. This time, do you notice there is something different called button appearance? What is the button appearance? It has two states. One is called item show, and the other is called item hidden. Item show means what you want others to see of your show hide button when the, the corresponding floating container is show, and item hidden is the opposite. So let's switch this button style to the text button first. Then for the title, for the item hidden, we need to type in show images copyright and click on the item show, typing hide image copyright. And you can also choose all the other things we talk about for the text button already, for the border, for the background, for the font, all the other stuff. And you can also choose the two different tooltip for it. Let's just apply and commit it. Now let's resize this text button to an appropriate size. Use the click to switch between the different state. Yes, with these titles, it will be easily for you to distinguish which current state it is at current moment. Button formatting is so important when you want to, when you want to, when you want to po polish your dashboard as well. So now I have more exciting, in, exciting experience. Want to share with you is our SVG image support. Brian, would you please click on the back button? Back to our, back to our landing page. Yes, click on that food stuff again. This is, our, this is our hidden my plate image I just showed you before. Would you please click on it, choose the context menu to bring the outside floating container. Then resize it. Did you see how crisp and clear and sharp it is no matter how we resize it? But I want to show you something different. With the same image, but rendered with our previous version of Tableau, like 18.3. Please switch to the 18.3. With the same image, you can see how blurry it is for this one. What's the, result for, what's the reason for this one? It is because Tableau now supporting SVG image, SVG image support both for image object and the dashboard buttons. And there are more examples of the SVG image usage in our dashboard. Let's go back to our previous dashboard. You can see all the hidden eyes here are actually the usage of the SVG image. And you can see how crisp and sharp it is. SVG image is defined by XML format and has a huge advantages of using it, like for scalability, editing ability and resolution independence. So we hope you really enjoy this SVG image support. And now let's switch to the next chapter to welcome Brian back to talk about web URL actions. 
Thank you, Wenyan. I know my raccoon here seeing all the food is getting pretty hungry. I told you I'd do something. I really love SVG images. It's actually an example of one of the hackathons I've done while I've been at Tableau. And I love how great it can look across different dashboard sizes and allows you to avoid having to keep asking for new image assets just because you wanted to tweak the size of an image object. Now, this next port I'm also really excited about and also came about from a hackathon, and this is URL actions. In particular, adding the ability to choose what a URL action targets and making it easier to add new ones. Now, we've been talking a lot about pies. I'm just going to keep it going. I got to keep it going. Um, let's go back to the product list page. And on here, we have first chosen some things that were actual pies, but maybe we just want that pumpkin pie flavoring, you know, the sort of spices that are in it. At the very top here, we had three different Pop-Tarts here that actually have that pumpkin pie spice in it. Now, they come in different sizes. I think I want to choose the largest one so that I have a lot to share. Now, if we click on it, wouldn't it be great if we could get a comparison, say, like from eBay and Amazon, seeing where we should go buy these nice, delicious Pop-Tarts with pumpkin pie flavoring? We can, and URL actions with their targeting options enable this to happen. You can see here we have, a, on the left, a shopping icon that, when we click on it, is going to bring in some additional web objects. This is also leveraging the show hide button we talked about earlier so that it wasn't always on the dashboard. Now, we had two URL actions set up, one targeting the top web object and another one targeting the bottom web object, the top one loading eBay and the bottom one loading Amazon. Now, Wenyan, where do you think we should go buy these Pop-Tarts from? The Amazon one seems $6 cheaper than eBay. Awesome. I think I should go order me some Pop-Tarts from Amazon. Maybe we should do it for our next morale event. Yes, cool idea. Great. And just like that, we were able to get that product comparison directly in our dashboard. Now, we've shown this in action. Let's see how to configure it. If you're, from, as you're likely familiar with, at the top under dashboards, there's an actions option. And under here brings up the actions dialog. And then you can click the add action and go to URL, which will bring you up a new URL action. Now here at the bottom, there are additional options you may not have noticed before. There is now a new browser tab, a web page object, and a browser tab, if no web object exists. Let's talk about each of them. The top one is straightforward, and we did it because you might be familiar with link target, hacks that you would have to share your workbook with, and it would affect the whole workbook to achieve the same behavior. Now with this option, you can, on an individual URL action, have it open a new browser tab, allowing you additional interactivity. The next option is the web page object. And this one actually is my favorite and is part of the reason we showed it in our demo. This one allows you to choose which web object on your dashboard you want the URL navigation to take place in, allowing you to have multiple dynamic web objects on your dashboard, just like we saw with eBay and Amazon reacting to our click on the product list. And if you need to change it, you can bring up that combo box, and it lists all the web objects on your dashboard. Now, I say this last option for, for last because it's actually a little bit complicated, and it's what's existed in Tableau today. Well, not today. It's existed for a long, long time, and also today. Um, what this is trying to say is that when the URL action is invoked, if there is at least one web object on the dashboard, it will target and navigate there. Otherwise, it'll open in a browser tab. Now, I, we don't know which web object it's going to target, and that behavior can change depending on whether you're on desktop or web or other settings, which made it a really hard option to use. But it's still useful for when you have actions that span across multiple sheets on the dashboard, like with a data source. Now, in addition to this, I also wanted to make it easier to create URL actions so you didn't have to go through all the complicated menus, especially for a web page object, trying to have to remember, OK, I'm targeting this web page object or, or that. Let's see it in action. So if we go on a web object and click on the context menu, you'll see there's another option on here. 
add URL action. And we did this to make it really easy to add a URL action. And when we click on it, you'll see that it directly went in to adding a new URL action with web object already set and already configured for there. So you don't have to remember, what was my web object called? It's just go to the context menu, click it, and you can focus on creating where the URL should go and whether it's from selection, hover, or menu. And it's just that easy. Great. Now, we've shown a lot of different things. Um, these are different ways to help you raise your dashboards to the next level. I wanted to make sure you're aware that, just like uh, most of the presentations, the PowerPoint deck's available for this one to download later. You can see the key points on there. You can see that we talked about navigation buttons. And, sh and I'll go through these quickly, so don't worry about like, reading all of it. It definitely is downloaded for later. Talked about navigation buttons and show hide buttons. And we showed how to create the buttons. And we talked about the performance side of it. Um, we then showed SVG images. I mean, we talked about, sorry, button formatting, seeing it in an image object, seeing it from a text perspective, seeing the border and background. We then showed how it looks good with an SVG object, and we included some cool comparisons showing that blurriness we showed in the demo today. Um, and then we finished off with showing the different URL action targeting options that are now available and the easier way to create new ones. And we hope by doing all of this, this will make you able to create more interactive dashboards, avoid the need for unnecessary hacks, and just make it better for your users. So thank you for coming to the presentation.